Hey guys, what's up? I'm Morgan and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for tuning in. Today is the last week, you guys, of the series that I created called Becoming a Swimpreneur. We have made it to week eight. This has been a two month journey of building your brands and building those startup brands, whether you're in the swimwear industry or you created a fashion boutique, all of these things that I've talked about over the course of the last seven weeks so far, and now we're moving into the last week, which is the eighth week, can be applied to pretty much any launch that happens online. You just have to insert your industry into what we are doing here. However, I wanted to make this very specific to the swimmer industry and the swimmer um, market because that's what I am all about. That's the industry that I am in. In, and I wanted to help all of you guys out because I know that there, there's tons of like new entrepreneurs within the swimmer space that follow me on this YouTube channel and support everything that I've been doing. So one, thank you very much. And now let's get into week eight. And this is going to be all about your launch date, the date that you launch your brand online okay now the crazy part about this is it's going to be super easy but the tips that i have for you are going to help carry you over for the next couple of weeks and months and into the future because there are things that you definitely need to implement when you launch your brand but before we get into this let's do a slight recap to catch you guys all up during week one of becoming a swimpreneur we started by learning how to design our first swimmer collection. Like how to easily s sketch your designs and find your style and rhythm for your design process. In week two, we covered all the things going into picking the best swimmer fabrics and how one of my recommended vendors operate. Seeing your sketches for the first time is a sure way to saving time when buying your fabrics. Once we established our style of design and fabric choices for our collection, I felt that in week three, we should cover the best swimwear design supplies for all the swimpreneurs that want to start practicing the cut and sew process. The feedback was great. Moving forward, it was now time to get online and secure your space and your handles across your social medias in week four. We sketched and sourced and now it was time to start your online brand. Although we were prepared for an online presence, we needed to legalize our brands in week five. Getting business licenses, becoming an LLC, or incorporated companies, we learned and discussed all of our options. I can't believe we followed through and have the ideas, the skills, and desire to be great. That's when I decided in week six, we needed to take it up a notch and secure our website on Shopify. The Shopify guy was a fan favorite. You guys have been killing it. Keep on DMing, DMing me your progress because I really do love hearing the feedback from you guys on what it is that we're doing on this channel. So we're on social media, we're taking our pictures, we're writing our product descriptions, and in week seven, we learned how to prepare our collection for our launch. So now you guys, welcome to week eight, the final week of becoming a swimpreneur. Let's get right into these tips. So now that we are on week eight and we are ready to launch our brand, the first bit of advice that I want to give you is an automatic thing that should happen naturally is you need to be 100% about your brand, meaning you need to go all in on your launch date. And in order to go all in, you have to be very confident and very secure within how you operate as a brand owner and what your brand represents because this is something you are going to ultimately be promoting forever, okay? So you have to be 100% authentic to your brand, but also be 100% into your brand because no one else is gonna go as hard as you are for your company. The next bit of advice, now that, we have, now that we have covered your confidence levels within your brand, the next bit of advice I have for you guys is to try and be consistent with your brand awareness because with your brand awareness on your launch date, what you need to be doing is really going in and making sure that the way that you communicate online is the way that your brand feels on your website as well, because that's how you're going to increase your brand awareness. You do not want to have a disconnect. I stress this to you guys all the time because when you are having, when you have a certain tone on your social medias and then you go to your website and you don't have that same energy, it's a disconnect 
connect and people are going to be off put by it because it's not the same energy that you brought to them on social media okay so this is what i mean when i say create more brand awareness this is the time where you need to start planning out the content that's going to be future uploads for your brand meaning right now on your launch date you're going to be listening to the feedback you're going to be hearing people you're going to be looking at the things that they like more than the other you're going to be looking at how many people are coming to your website you're going to be looking where that traffic is coming from where is all these engagement points coming from take that consider that this is going to be something that's going to be developing over time so it's not going to be on day one most likely it's probably going to be like within the first two to four weeks maybe even two to eight weeks it's going to be all of that engagement that you gather up and you um consider this is where you're going to be building that brand awareness because now you have the analytics to back up what it is that you need to be uh, paying more attention to as far as when you post as far as what you post as far as who's looking at it where they're looking at it from meaning what state are they at what country are they more um coming to your website more frequently because this is how you develop your um, brand presence when it comes to creating ads later on in the future if that's something that you choose to do. So things that you can do to create more awareness surrounding your brand is create blog posts. Look at topics that are really hot within your brand. Look at comments that you get and create blog posts that answer a lot of those comments that really give in to your audience a lot so that you are constantly watering them. If you water your brand it will grow you have to treat it like a plant so you kind of have to always be looking for those points of engagement so that you can create future content that's all i'm saying okay um, the next thing that you want to do when you are launching your brand when you are in that launch phase of your brand is to prepare for growth growth can happen very fast it can happen overnight it can happen over the course of a few weeks a few months it can happen and it's going to happen if you are nurturing your brand so when i what i mean by prepare for growth is are you prepared to scale your business when it happens meaning you need to be in a position to be financially responsible for your brand so that way when your brand is growing you are prepared to take on all of those new um things that are happening within your brand so one thing that you need to be financially prepared for is if your business is growing at a large um, rate or is growing faster than what you can handle alone, you need to be prepared to implement new strategies as far as your shipping and delivery, as far as who's going to be answering emails, who's going to be talking, doing customer service, um, all of those things come into play when your brand is growing. So you need to have a plan for when it's time to outsource, whether that is through virtual assistance or whether that is hiring friends and family or hiring an actual team to do those things. You need to be prepared, which means you need to stay on top of your finances and not just spend all the money that's coming in. You need to collect and have a savings. So prepare for growth is something that I highly recommend because you never know what's going to happen and you don't know the outcome of what's of what your customers are going to flock to in terms of how much money they're going to be spending on a regular basis within your brand okay so that's the third thing the next part is you want to start preparing for long-term marketing the long-term marketing you guys is something that's crucial to your branding in from now all the way into the future this is something that you will always have to pay attention to because this is the one thing that is constantly going to carry you over as far as brand awareness and linking your brand to the public marketing is huge whatever you post is marketing okay the pictures you post on your instagram that's marketing what you post in your blog forms or whatever that's marketing the way that you deliver your products is marketing. The way that the time frame that you ship out your products, that's marketing. Every single thing goes into marketing your brand. This is why people have customer complaints. This is why people have um, unresolved issues. It's because your marketing may be weak or you have the greatest marketing ever. I personally have not had any downfalls when it comes to my shipping times, when it comes to my packaging, orders not arriving on time and things like that. And that's because, like I said in one of my videos, I offer insurance, okay? If my package is over a certain price, I put insurance on it. Um, every single package that I send out is tracked. So that way I have a, a point of um, contact when I have to deal with like 
shipping out product, my customer has another point, which means that is a three point contact. It goes through me, it goes through the post office, and it goes through my customer. We all have the same things when it comes to shipping. That's just a one, one part of your marketing. A lot of people and a lot of new brands have problems with shipping and handling. That's something you should always be on top of because you don't want to be looked at as the new brand that is lazy, okay? don't You don't want to be that brand. So just have very clear messaging when it comes to how you communicate with your audience because again, that goes into marketing. I know I'm saying marketing a lot, but I really want to get this point across to you. So when you have launched your brand, things that you want to pay attention to for your long-term marketing is exactly which products and styles are selling the most or which products and styles are getting the most engagement as far as likes and comments or compliments when you're out in public with, with um, your audience. Those are the products that are going to really define your brand and your signature style. Those are the pieces that people are going to resonate with because they are giving you the most feedback with those products it's not it does not mean do not expand your brand but what it means is cater to those styles and similar styles and slowly merge out of those styles when you are over it as a brand designer and a brand owner but also make sure that you're merging things in a way that you're growing with your brand I am growing with my brand I started in 2018 um, June 18th of 2018 and I am growing as a not only a brand owner but a brand designer and so is my audience. Everything that I do is like little implements from the last thing that I did and that way I am not just completely shocking the system when it comes to something new that I really like. I am merging them with me and letting them elevate with me. Another thing that's super duper duper important. Do not over deliver things that you cannot make a full commitment at, okay? What that means is a lot of new brands, a lot of new brands, I've been witnessing this for months now, try and over deliver. They try to please their audience in a way that cannot be obtained, okay? I keep telling people, I tell people that I coach in this business, don't offer what you don't have, okay? You cannot sell something that you do not have. All right, those pre-orders is cute and everything because it makes you look like you got product. But if you know for a fact that you cannot get that product during your delivery date, do not offer it. There's a way to do pre-orders and you have to have the confidence in the manufacturer or within the wholesale company that you are buying from in order to even offer something. Do not offer what you do not have. That can create turmoil between you, your your current customers and your future customers because I promise you people are quick to leave a bad review before they are to leave a good review okay that's just how energy works okay it's a lot easier to accept good energy and good feedback than it is to push away bad vibes and bad energy because though that toxic trait y'all is is real okay so don't over deliver something and don't try to um give more than you have. One thing about smart business and smart branding is making sure that you can actually maintain what it is that you are offering, all right? So I promise you, your intentions might be in the right place, but only over deliver in aspects of your customer service and aspects of what it is that you are promoting and on your website. Those are things that you can over deliver on. You can make things look beautiful. You can make um, the customer experience beautiful. Over deliver on those things, but do not over deliver on product that you do not have because you are going to be stressed out as a business owner and your customers are going to be stressed out because they are not receiving their product. Period. Now, Two more things, okay, to pay attention to during your launching phase. This is something I probably should have put this in the beginning of all of this after I said be 100% true to your brand and go all in. Having content that fits into your gray areas is going to be something that you're constantly working on as well. What I mean by gray area is on that down um spiral not like a not quick spiral but there's always going to be downtime within your brand just to be honest okay so during your downtime meaning you could be in between product launches or in between um like your marketing meaning you could be in between seasons or something like that you're doing like the crossover you're trying to merge into the next thing there's going to be a gray area where you're not getting as much engagement as you had during a launch or during um 
you know, product debuts or the hype of whatever product that you have. So your gray area, you need to have content that fits into that. Now, the type of content that you can use that fits into that are filler photos. I talked to you guys about this before. Use filler photos. Those are photos that fit and represent your brand or that um, can translate into your captions of what it is that you're posting on social media, but also during your gray areas for your online business, as far as like your website and having people on your website during that gray area, these are times to start doing upsells. The upsells are really going to work, especially in between time, because people are getting um, restless when it comes to downtime because they just don't know what to buy because they miss the first drop. So a lot of the downtime, you guys, um, on your website, you should really try to market as far as upsells because the upsell is what's going to get rid of a lot of that old stock, all right? If you see something that's not moving, now is the time to try to push those products. Now is the time to try to probably offer some sort of uh, discount, some sort of promo that you have to get rid of product before you launch the next thing um, as far as a new product that comes to your site or you know the new season collection or whatever it is try to get rid of some of that product because you need that income okay you don't want to just be sitting on products this is how you restructure your business you're always going to be restru restructuring in the terms of your gray areas and pushing products you can definitely post things on Facebook post things on um, um, Instagram on Twitter whatever maybe you need to restructure how you're posting and the models that you're using if you're using yourself maybe it's time to to like put on try on your swimsuits or clothing whatever it is that you're launching and re-market it in a new way it's something that fits the current time or whatever it is that's going to be a part of your creative creativity levels but ultimately that gray area is time to start pushing product offering um deals promos whatever it is um giveaways um something like that i don't do giveaways on my with my brand i haven't done one yet i plan to do it as i grow but i haven't done a giveaway but i do know that giveaways work However, giveaways are tricky because you accumulate a lot of new people just for the giveaway instead of people that actually like your brand. They just want the free stuff. Don't sleep. Now, finally, a big part that also goes into that gray area, you guys, which is my last bit of advice, and don't take this lightly, is your launch buzz die out plan, okay? Now, you're gonna have hype around your launch if you are promoting it, okay? If you're promoting correctly, you're gonna have hype around it. It's going to be a buzz happening around your brand. It happens with all new brands, all new brand uh, launches, um, product launches, um, client-based business when you're offering a new um, course or whatever, you're going to have the hype of your launch. What is going to happen is that launch buzz is going to eventually start dying out. <laughs> Okay, so you need to have a plan in place to make sure that you can still deliver on your deliverables when it comes to your launch. So having a launch buzz dial plan is going to be crucial. Okay, okay, listen. During the dial phase, guys, of your launch, there are things that you can do to make sure that you don't lose all of your customers, <laughs> all right? And a lot of those things have to do with all of the above of what I just mentioned, but most importantly, when you are dealing with launch dial, this is time for you to understand that people still want that same energy from your launch. You want to constantly have a rhythm and a flow to how it is that you are pushing out product, but also how you are promoting said product. Make sure that you have developed a consistent schedule. Make sure that you have content that is going to last you all the way through until whatever it is that you are going to be debuting next for your brand. What I mean by this is having um, a direct action plan as far as your content scheduling. That's why in the video before this and probably the video before that, I told you guys to take pictures, have enough um, flat lays, have enough on body, um, on body um, images, have enough um, behind the scenes things for your story instagram stories or whatever stories that you're doing have blog posts ready to go have your captions and all that stuff ready to go because a lot of times people just launch and they're like okay it's open it's a free-for-all now go shopping and they don't have plans set in place to carry them through that launch you want to have content to post don't sleep on the content i'm telling you guys if you if your launch buzz dies down 
at a accelerated rate meaning it just goes like oh hype up here and then all of a sudden it's like Phew. that means that you have not been consistent that means you have not been gathering up your customers so that they are following you that they are still commenting and engaging with you whether that is liking or commenting or dming you you need to make sure that you are consistent across the board that is a really big piece of advice be consistent be 100 within your brand if you are 100 percent about your brand and about your business and about growing your finances with your company and elevating your company automatically you should know that by being 100 percent a part of your brand and in your brand that you are going to be consistent no matter what so if i have to tell you to be consistent and you have that ingrained in your head then that means that you are ready to be a boss you're ready to be a brand owner you are ready to just make sure that your business thrives and flourishes anytime no matter what it is going on in the world you are going to be authentic to who you are and what you represent from your brand and that's what people are going to flock to that's what people are going to be engaged with because people love content and they love being um they love being given content by someone who is authentic to who they are and what they put out to the world so that is how you make sure that you're die out plan from your buzz doesn't just plummet you you don't want that to happen you can be up here and you can start going like this and have a steady pace until you get back up here but you don't want it to go from here and then just because you weren't being consistent okay guys that is the end of this video i hope you guys like this make sure that you hit the comment section let me know if you've actually watched all of the series from um, week one all the way up until now let me know your thoughts let me know how you've been preparing for your brand launch or if you've already launched let me know you know where you're at because i do have something special coming up within the next few weeks that i've been working on and um, i know it's going to help a lot of you from going from this becoming a swimpreneur phase to actually being a swimpreneur and it's going to be um amazing you guys are going to love it i just know you guys are going to love it because i'm in love with it and that's just the energy that i'm giving off okay so um let me know in the comment section how you guys have been doing or let me know about things that you want to see on my channel oh before i go there was a part of this series that I was going to add to the series and it was all about building out your tech packs. I want to make that a completely separate video because after looking at the footage, it belongs on its own, you know, so I'm going to be doing that video next. It's going to be a short and sweet video because it's not that difficult and I'm not going to charge you guys for a tech pack when you guys can do it yourselves before you end up having to pay a manufacturer. So the tech pack video for your designs is going to be coming up next. Most likely it'll be tomorrow. I think Monday. Monday or either Wednesday so just look out for that video and until then you guys I will see you guys on the next one I hope you guys love this series I am very happy with this series and let's keep growing share all these videos you know share it tag me share it just share 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 <laughs> bye